Cindy, you there? You're free tomorrow, right? Look after my son for me, will you? Me and some of the other moms are going out for some drinks. You know how it is. Gotta keep up with the Joneses and whatnot. I would ask my husband, but he's out on a work trip. Really need you to help out here. You'll do me this favor, right? Tomorrow? I never said anything about being free. I feel like I'm watching your son every day. I'm not a daycare center that you can use at your convenience. I have a life, you know. Oh, come on. I know you have time to spare. Let me guess. You're gonna lay around and watch Netflix or something. Since you have nowhere to be, you can watch my son. It's not a big deal. He's practically family. Your cute little nephew, you can say. I mean, yes, that's true. I really care about him, but... Little Ben is a bit... How can I say this? Out of hand? He's quite the troublemaker, as cute as he is. My floors are completely ruined now because he draws all over them every time he comes over. Not only the floors, but the walls too. The whole entire house. It must mean he is full of energy, which is a good thing, of course. But it's just too much for me to handle at this point. I'm not even getting paid for this. And it's not like you're paying for the damages done. He's just a kid. Give him a break. You don't have to give him such a hard time. He just has a lot of energy. You know boys his age. That's just normal behavior for them. He'll outgrow it soon enough. I shouldn't expect you to understand, though, since you've never had any kids before. You're not worried about him? Shouldn't you be spending more time with him, rather than handing him over all the time to someone who's not even family? I'm sure it's a lot of stress for Ben as well. He wants to be with his parents, I'm sure. That kid is fine. He's one carefree kid, if you ask me. He doesn't mind at all. He has fun with you anyways. But he's with me practically every day. That's just too much, don't you think? I'm really busy these days, mind you. Not only was I elected as an important member of the PTA committee, I have to attend all the mommy get-togethers. You may think I'm just out socializing or something, but I need to make sure I maintain my status around here. It's a lot of work, okay? These moms need me. I'm like the glue that holds the group together. You can even say I'm like the leader. That's why everyone keeps coming to me. They really do need me. So I'm just really preoccupied keeping up with my priorities. Even so, I can't leave little Ben alone. He's still too young. I'd feel better leaving him with you. You understand, right? I'm sure there's an after-school program Ben can join at school. I tried enrolling him, but there's this one little kid Ben keeps getting into fights with. I can't put them in the same class together. Anyway, Ben keeps telling me he doesn't want to go. I can't force him to do what he doesn't want to do, right? He really likes you. Don't make me tell him you don't want to spend time with him. All right, all right, I'll look after him. But under one condition. As always, I can only watch him until sundown. I'll make him go home before it gets dark. Aw, thank you so much. You're a sweetheart. Take good care of him and have fun together. Hey, Cindy. Watch my kid today. You got time, right? Uh, today? That's a bit sudden. My friend just got hospitalized today. It happened out of the blue. I'd really like to go visit her. I'm sure she needs me right now. She's all alone. Why don't you just bring Ben with you? I'm sure it's fine. Ben finishes school at around 2 p.m., but visiting hours for the hospital are until 3 p.m. I won't make it if I go and pick up Ben from school. So you can go pick up Ben for me. This is too short of a notice. I can't just drop everything and do everything you ask every time you demand. Today is not a good day for me. Find someone else to help you. I'm sorry. I really do wish I could help. Why can't you help out? What's so important that you'd leave me in this situation like this? You're just some stay-at-home mom with nothing better to do. It's not like you're part of the PTA committee or have any mommy friends like me. You have all the time in the world. What could you possibly have to do instead of picking up Ben? I have things to do, just like anyone else. Don't just assume I have no life. I have to go to City Hall today. I can't reschedule. I have other plans as well. I'm not going to rearrange my schedule for you. You have to tell me ahead of time if you want me to help you. So, you're telling me you want me to leave Ben all alone? What are you going to do if something happens to Ben while I'm gone? 
You gonna take responsibility? Poor Ben. Don't tell me you don't care about him. That's what your actions are telling me right now. I can't take responsibility for that. Well then, you take care of him. You just have to leave him at your house, that's it. I don't ask anything else of you. Easy peasy, if you ask me. Fine. Like all other days, I'll make him go home at 5 p.m., no later. Deal? Sure, sure, got it. I'll be home by then anyways. I'll text Ben and let him know the plan. He'll be excited to see you. Thanks again! Ben just came back from school. He was sulking and causing a fit because he wanted to play with his friends after school. Ah, uh, I'm guessing Tommy. Tommy is Ben's best friend. They're attached at the hip. They're always playing together. Ben hates being separated from him. But I heard Tommy had to go somewhere with his mom today. There's nothing we can do. Just let Ben have his little fit. I see. So Ben couldn't play with Tommy today either way. I don't like Ben playing so much with Tommy anyways. Ben doesn't come home when he's with Tommy. I practically have to drag him home every single time. It's really a pain. Oh, really? That's quite the stressful situation, huh? Looks like Ben and Tommy are really close. We can't really do anything at this point if Tommy isn't home. Just tell Ben to give up and be a good boy, won't you? I'm sure he'll calm down after a while. Okay, gotta go. Have a good time with Ben. Oh, Cindy, forgot to mention something. I have a favor to ask you. On my way home, I just so happened to run into some of the moms from Ben's school. What a coincidence, huh? They asked me to go get some drinks later tonight. Of course, I couldn't decline the invitation. Ben is still with you anyway, so just watch him until tomorrow, okay? I already sent him home a while ago. What? Why? Isn't it too early? I thought you would watch him longer. What's the deal? You don't remember me telling you that I'd send him home before dark? That has always been the case. I don't know why you're so surprised. Please don't tell me you're still not home yet, Alyssa. Of course not! Who said I would be back that early anyways? What a pain. The least you could have done is give me a message telling me you sent him home. There's always the possibility that I'm still not back yet when you send Ben back. Didn't that cross your mind? Uh, I told you I'd send him back by 5pm. That was our agreement. There's no need for me to message you. Well, what if something unexpected happens? You never know. It's better to just let me know just in case. No, you can contact me if something comes up for you. We had an agreement, so if you need me to watch him longer, that's on you to let me know. I'm on my way home now, but I don't think I'll make it by the time Ben gets home. He could have just told me. I would have been okay watching him just a little bit longer. Forget it. I'll just hurry and get home as soon as I can. Jeez, Cindy. Maybe think a little before acting next time? This could have been prevented, you know. So, Ben isn't home yet. I'm getting really worried. He's not over there with you, is he? Uh, no. He hasn't come back after I sent him home. It's already been an hour. I always tell Ben that if his mom isn't home when I send him back there, he should come back to my place. Have you tried calling or texting him? I'm assuming his battery died or something because he hasn't been picking up like he usually does. Oh no. What should I do now? This is all your fault, Cindy! No one else but you! Why would you send my son back alone? Without even confirming with me! Ben is already in the third grade. He's a big kid now. He can walk back alone. I send him back while it's still daylight and he always walks back on the main road where there's a lot of people. Not to mention, I'm really busy and I still agree to look after your son every single time. You're the one who is practically pushing him onto me constantly. I can't walk him from and to his house every single time. What? Are you saying that you don't care what happens to Ben? That just because you're busy, it doesn't matter that you put Ben in danger. You have no heart. Unbelievable. I should have never let you watch Ben. Don't put words in my mouth. I never said anything like that. And maybe you should check his school. He might have gone there instead. Why don't you call the school? I swear I'll sue you if he's not at school. Prepare yourself. I doubt you could even make a case. And honestly, that's not even what's important right now. Our first priority should be finding Ben. Let's get to it already. I'll go look around the neighborhood. So please just call the school. We need to work together as a team right now. You don't have to tell me what to do. I was already planning on doing that. A 
Melissa, I found him. Oh my goodness. You found Ben? Where was he? He just came back to my place. Don't worry, he's safe and unharmed. He said that since no one was home, he went to go play for a bit. Oh, what a relief. I was literally ready to have a panic attack. He's such a difficult boy, causing so much trouble for other people. But even so, this time it was all because of your mistake, Cindy. You messed up big time. Something terrible could have happened to Ben all because of your selfishness and incompetence. I hope you feel terrible about what you did. Sure, I apologize for what happened. By the way, don't you want to know where Ben went while we were trying to find him? Why would you ask that? I'm sure he was just messing around here and there. Ben was at his best friend Tommy's house. What? Tommy's house? Why? Tommy's not even home. I'm sure Ben didn't know and just thought he would be able to play with Tommy if he went to go visit. But when he went, he found out that Tommy and his mom weren't home yet. Ah, oh, I see. Ben didn't try to go inside, did he? He didn't say anything else? What would he say? It's not like Tommy or his mom was home. I know you're my sister-in-law, so I don't want to go around accusing you of anything, but you're being quite suspicious. Are you trying to hide something? What nonsense. I'm not hiding anything. I was just worried because Ben is really used to being around Tommy, so he doesn't really think twice about his manners and whatnot. I thought he might have tried to get into the house without permission or something. You know how Ben is. He doesn't know boundaries. Would he go to such lengths, though? I don't think he would do something like that. Either way, it doesn't seem like he tried to get into the house on his own. He didn't say anything about it. Thank goodness. Although he did say he went around to the backyard to get a quick look inside the house. What the heck is that kid thinking? Oh my god. Why would he go around doing something like that? He shouldn't be trespassing on private property like that. Oh, you know little Ben. He said he likes surprising Tommy's mom for fun. As a prank. It's something he always does. You didn't know? He's a little troublemaker, that one. It was the living room, right? The place he was able to see from the backyard. Did he say he saw something? Something? What might this something be? No one was home, right? I mean, if he didn't say anything, it's fine. Nothing to talk about here. Just forget what I said. Ah, uh, there was something, actually. Tommy and his mom were gone, like you said, but... Apparently, Tommy's dad was still home. Tommy's dad? He was home? Ben told me that he saw. From the backyard. You know, you and Tommy's dad having an affair on the living room couch. Affair? What affair? There's no affair. What a ridiculous accusation. There must be some kind of misunderstanding happening. There's no affair going on. I know Ben is just lying, trying to get back at me for not being able to play with his friends. You know how much trouble he likes to make, especially when he's frustrated. You don't have to take everything he says so seriously. He's just a kid. Don't you know better than to believe his every word? When Ben came back to my place, he was hunched over, crying endlessly. I don't think Ben is that good of an actor. He was really in shock, sobbing, unable to speak properly. Then he must have made a mistake. There's no way he saw me and Tommy's dad together. He probably saw something else and just jumped to conclusions. He said that it was really you that he saw through the window. I asked him if he was really sure, more than once. He kept saying that he knew it was you, that there was no way it was anyone else. And from what I heard, you guys were pretty close to the window. So it's practically impossible that Ben saw anything other than what he saw. Would a son mistake someone else as his own mother? I don't think so. Ben is in the third grade for crying out loud. I think we can trust what he is saying. If he saw an affair happening, he would know exactly what was going on and understand how wrong it is. He was so shocked, he couldn't think straight and was wandering around the neighborhood by himself. I'm sure he didn't want to see his mom's face after seeing what she was doing with his best friend's dad. He told me that he didn't really have any other place to go except for my house. Poor kid. You've really traumatized him, you know? This is gonna stay with him forever. You! You fed him lies or something, didn't you? You wanted to make me look bad, so you told him I was having an affair. Me? I would never do something like that. Why would I do something like that? This is just plain silly. You're running out of cards to play, so just admit what you did. It was your fault that my son went missing in the first place. You just wanted to avoid taking responsibility for your mistake, so you made this dumb little plan to pin all the blame on me. You're a sneaky woman. How dare you try to fool me? Nice try, though. I see. 
So I guess you're not going to admit you were having an affair. Even when your son is a witness to your wrongdoing and is willing to testify against you. You're really something. There's nothing to admit when I haven't done anything even close to having an affair. I've never done anything like that in my life. Sure. So your son is just a big fat liar, huh? That's what you want to say? Like I said, I didn't have an affair. And that's that. I have nothing else to say. Huh. Okay. Well, either way, I contacted Tommy's mom to tell her everything that happened. You freaking told her! Tommy's mom came home right away to investigate what was going on. She looked around the house to see if there was any evidence. And what do you know? She found some long strands of hair on the couch. I wonder whose hair it was. I mean, no one in that family has long hair, right? She brought the evidence to her husband's attention and demanded to know the truth. Looks like he wasn't strong enough to hold it in, because he ended up confessing. About the affair and all. Tommy's dad is weak under pressure, but otherwise it would have been a piece of cake finding out with the help of a private investigator. I'm sure he thought the consequences of his actions would have been worse if he hadn't owned up to his mistakes early on. Smart guy. So, there you have it. Tommy's dad admitted to having an illegitimate affair with you. There's too much evidence now. There's nothing you can say that can save you. It wasn't serious. It's not like I loved him or anything. What are you trying to say now? It was just a spur of the moment type of thing. We weren't really thinking about staying together or anything. We fell under the temptation once, but it was an innocent mistake, I promise. It's just that we started talking because our kids are so close and all. I didn't think we would hit it off like we did. I felt young again and the sparks were flying. So what? Does that give you some free pass to cheat and hide what you did? There's no excuse for what you did. And Alyssa, you lied to me. You kept denying the fact that you had an affair, over and over. If by any tiny chance I had actually believed you, you know you would have framed Ben as a liar. You would actually go as far as to use your son to cover up your own selfish actions? Imagine the damage it would have done to him. Do you not care about your son's feelings at all? Admitting to my affair would have destroyed my family and there wouldn't be anything I could do to repair the damage. I mean, now that everything's out in the open, that's what I imagine will happen now, but... I think Ben would be way more unhappy if our family was torn apart. Compared to that, he could deal with being the sacrificial lamb of our affair. It's too late. Your family is completely destroyed now. And it's all because of you and your spur-of-the-moment rendezvous. Ben is saying he never wants to see his mom again. I don't blame him for saying that. What he saw must have been painful, confusing, and disgusting. Looks like he also finds the thought of you repulsive. He said those things. I'm his mom. He doesn't need to go that far. I just made a mistake. He'll forgive me soon enough. He can't live without me. What are you talking about? Of course he would think those things. He's nine. He's old enough to understand the weight of your actions. You made him see things that no nine-year-old should ever have to see. Even if you didn't mean to hurt him, what you did was unforgivable. You'll pay the price for your foolishness. I also let my brother know about this as well. You should have kept quiet. Don't just go around saying whatever you want. I wanted to talk to him first. It would have been better for us to communicate without you butting in and making things worse. I just know you would have twisted things around in your favor, trying to make yourself look good by changing up the story. I couldn't let that happen. Not to my brother. I told him every single little detail about this fiasco. Every single detail? Like, how much? Not everything. Right? Yes, everything. And he didn't know that you kept forcing me to look after Ben day after day. That you used my house as a daycare center whenever you pleased. He was surprised, as was I. Who knew you were going behind his back to take advantage of me? That's because he never comes home. He's always away at work. The timing was never good. We barely exchange words during the week. How do you expect me to explain stuff like this to him in detail? Ugh. I should have complained to him earlier instead of putting up with you for so long. He was always busy until late at night and we don't get to meet often. So I felt bad bringing it up. I didn't want to burden him when he's already stressed out as it is. Now, now. What could you possibly complain about? You are happy to help out. It's not like you ever declined my requests. Stop making me out to be some bad guy. It's not that hard to say no. Uh, seriously? Do you know how many times I told you no? but you still kept manipulating and guilting me into watching him. He never took no for an answer. Did I do anything wrong? 
I don't think so. It was always the PTA or your mommy friends or whatever. You made it sound like you were so busy 24-7. Now I'm starting to think it was all lies. I can't believe anything you say anymore. Why would I lie about that? I was telling the truth. Every time. He probably lied about those friends of yours. Just so you could go meet up and have a good old time with Tommy's dad. Am I wrong? I would never do something like that. I didn't lie, all right. I really had important things to do. I was actually busy with the PTA and the get-togethers and everything. No lie. Huh, whatever you say. We'll see once the investigations go underway. No need to explain yourself, because the truth will come to light soon enough. My brother wants to talk with you tonight, so he asked me to look after Ben. He'll stay with me for the night. I don't mind, considering the circumstances. I'm doing it for my brother. And Ben. I'll take good care of Ben for now. Don't worry about us. Take all the time you need to talk things out with your husband, okay? After everything that happened, we found out that Alyssa had indeed lied about being busy with the mommy get-togethers and PTA. The only thing she was doing was meeting up with Tommy's dad, going on secret dates. The truth of the matter was, Alyssa had the worst reputation amongst the mothers and wasn't as well esteemed as she had pompously declared previously. Not a surprise considering how self-centered she is. Apparently, she didn't actually have any friends to begin with. In regards to her role in the PTA and school-related affairs, it looks like she was just made to do work that no one else wanted to do. She just made herself out to be some big shot just because of her pride and need of other people's approval. Not only did my brother divorce her, Tommy's parents also got a divorce as well. And of course, Alyssa and Tommy's dad had to pay consolation money to their ex-partners. It was a passionate love affair on their part, but their passion died out as quickly as it had started. The fireworks had subdued, and the two quietly parted ways. Rumors spread quickly throughout the neighborhood and all the way to the parents of Ben's school. Alyssa moved away, not being able to handle the disapproving eyes wherever she went. Things were tough and chaotic, but even in the end, Ben and Tommy were able to salvage their friendship. Their bond strengthened through the trials they survived. I'm so beyond relieved that the precious friendship between two young ones, who did no wrong, was not destroyed. But Ben was never the same after witnessing his mom's affair. On that horrid day Ben had found out about the affair, I comforted him all night long as he cried the night away. I guess he had a change of heart about me because he treated me a lot better after that night. He started listening to me and doing as I told him, he became a really good boy. He stopped making a mess in my house and destroying the floors and walls. Instead, he helped me do chores every time he came over. I no longer had any hard feelings about watching him now that he was being cooperative and well-behaved. I really hope he grows up to be a wonderful and happy young man. <laughs>